Pogo here. I was recently hired by Company Inc. to create their company website for them. They are a relatively new company and they're looking to get out on the web. So I spent a few minutes getting this uh, sort of initial version uh, coded completely HTML, no PHP or anything. And uh, I just want to see what you guys think about it. So here is the website for Company Inc. Um, I will say it's not my best work. It is not the most attractive website. It's a little bit black and white, a little bit boring, and I, I'm not too happy about it. So today we're going to learn how to use Bootstrap to make this website look a little bit nicer. Now, what exactly is Bootstrap? Um, Bootstrap was made by Twitter. It was developed by Twitter. And it's essentially a good way to think of it as it's a giant theme for HTML pages. It comes in the form of a CSS file that contains all of the different styles. And it also has a JavaScript file which enables some certain features that go along with these styles. So today we're going to take a look at how we can use Bootstrap to make this look a little bit nicer. Alright, so let's go ahead and first we need to download the Bootstrap files. We'll go ahead and head over to Bootstrap, getbootstrap.com. This is the official website for Bootstrap, and if this website design looks uh, somewhat familiar, if you've seen websites that look like that, those websites have probably used Bootstrap. And once we upgrade Company Inc.'s website to Bootstrap, you might see that it looks similar to some other websites. So we'll go ahead and download Bootstrap. We just need this first link. Um, you don't actually have to download Bootstrap. You can, um, you know, put it in directly from a URL, but I usually download it. Now, if you are using PHP Storm, there's built-in support for Bootstrap. When you create a project, you can just say, create a new Bootstrap project, and it'll automatically grab all the files. Excuse me, but I do have this one ready, so let's just uh, use this project that I already have open. So you'll see the CSS fonts and JS folders. We're going to take these and stick them into website. And then we'll take a look at what we have here from Bootstrap. Okay, so uh, in the CSS folder there are a bunch of files, but what we're interested in is this bootstrap.min.css. And this file contains all of the bootstrap stuff. Now it's all on one line here because it's minim uh, minified, but if you look at this, this is all of bootstrap right here. It is one incredibly long CSS file that defines uh, tons of different uh, CSS properties for all of the different components to create a nice looking unified look for these uh, components that we're going to use. Over in the font, those are the glyph icons. Uh, you can have a bunch of built-in little icons that work great for buttons or, you know, options. And, you know, those are available to you through Bootstrap, through CSS themes. Uh, finally, in JavaScript, we have our bootstrap.js. And this just contains a bunch of stuff that Bootstrap likes. Um, and yes, we are going to use that. It's not really going to make a difference in this project, but if you use drop downs or some other features, then it will matter. Uh, before we can start, there is one last thing. Bootstrap.js is dependent upon jQuery. Um, I haven't gone over jQuery yet, but it's a really cool... Thing. So I, I'm going to go over it, but we want to just go ahead and download jQuery. It is just one JavaScript file, and we will download the compressed production jQuery right here. And I'm actually going to option click it to download it. Now we'll grab our jQuery, 
and we'll stick it in here. Cool. Um, you don't need to worry about what jQuery is, but I will go over it, and it's a really nice tool whenever you're making any website. So, if I go ahead and look at this right now, nothing has changed because we haven't done any importing. We need to tell this web page that it's supposed to be using the um, bootstrap file and the bootstrap um, script. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this page open. I'm going to put this in another tab so we can see our original version over here and then we'll see our new version over here. So we're also going to take this step by step. I'm going to comment everything out and we're going to go one part by part and slowly get everything working. So first thing we're going to do, and I'll go ahead and do that up here, is we need the style sheet, the bootstrap.min.css, so that we can have all of our styles. So link rel equals style sheet. This is a style sheet. Um, sorry, href equals css slash bootstrap.min CSS. So that is the link to our CSS bootstrap file. So now that is included in there. Finally, at the bottom of the body, we need to uh, import first jQuery, then bootstrap. So first script src equals js slash jQuery. So we want to have jQuery and then, sorry, I think this wants, yeah. Okay, and then we are going to do js slash bootstrap dot min dot js. Okay, and these last two lines are not required on all pages, but if you write a page and some feature of it is not working, it might be dependent on the bootstrap JavaScript. So if I go ahead and reload the page, everything is now gone because I've commented everything out, but let's first work on the header. It's basically supposed to have the title company Inc. and the slogan bringing you great services since 20xx. So if I reload, you'll notice it already looks different than what it was before. The font definitely looks a little bit smoother. I would also say it's a little bit bigger. And it is also closer to the side. It's right up against the browser window, whereas here there is a little bit of white space. Now this doesn't look that bad, but there is a really cool thing that um, Bootstrap has that we're going to use. It's called a Jumbotron, and what it does is it creates a really nice looking huge banner. So we're going to go ahead and use the Jumbotron class. So we're going to use div class equals, and you'll see these are all the Bootstrap classes, and we're going to use the Jumbotron class. And when I put everything in here, it's going to put everything inside of this Jumbotron, and let's see what it looks like you'll see it kind of gives us this gray background and it made everything look a little bit bigger so it does look nice and you can change the color with um, a custom CSS um, add-on but we'll just leave it like this now let's just fix it because it's really really close to the side um, when you are working with bootstrap the most common class you're going to use is the container class. Div class equals container. And what the container does is it will align everything better. So if I reload, you'll see it's now tabbed over fairly far. So it gives us plenty of room. And whenever you're working with something, it's probably going to be inside of a container. So now we have our nice looking Jumbotron. The title already looks a little bit better, and the gray background means you can clearly differentiate between the title and slogan and all of the rest of the information. The next part is this text here, this little blurb, I guess. And you'll see it says it in, you know, standard font. Font still looks a little bit nicer than it does over there, but that's just my opinion. It is tabbed over too much. We're going to put it inside of a container. But we can actually make this look even a little bit nicer by using another feature, or another class in Bootstrap called the well. So we're going to go ahead and use the well class, and then we're going to pick a well, we'll say well small, and then we'll put it inside of there. And you'll see it's now put, as was previously thought, inside of this well. 
so you can clearly differentiate between you know everything that's outside of it and this it's it's like a little bubble that has it we do want to put this inside of a container and we'll put the well also inside of the container so container and then we have that and now you can see it's kind of centered on the page it has white space on either side and it does indeed have our blurb and I think it looks a little bit nicer in that bubble than it does out by itself. The next part is our comparison table. So let's just take a look at this for a second. We have our comparison table and comparing Company Inc. to all of its competitors. We can see that Company Inc. has 10 stuff while the competitors only have 6. Um, Company Inc. has a lot of things. Competitors have almost no things. So we definitely want to highlight this table. So what we are going to do is we are going to put it inside of a container, and we'll go ahead and do that first. Let's just take a look at how that works. I like to keep these things in separate containers so that they remain separated from each other. I think it um, looks a little bit nicer. And we can now see that we have kind of like a title and then this dividing line and then we have our table but we can use a nice looking bootstrap panel to do this for us we can have a nice looking title with the data inside and it looks exactly like a titled panel uh, I'll be right back and then we'll take a look at that sorry about that let's go ahead and take a look at the panel this will make everything look a lot nicer so first we're going to put everything inside of a panel and we can choose you'll notice this with buttons and loading bars and panels that there are a couple of different color styles there's the panel default which is your gray and then you have danger which is red info which I believe is blue success is green I don't remember what primary is and I know that warning is orange so let's just put this inside of an info this will add a little splash of color to our panel um, we do need a div class equals panel heading we need the heading this is like the title of the panel and we'll write comparison then we need the panel body and I'm going to move my table into the panel body and I'm going to get rid of that other stuff there. Um, before I show you what this looks like we're going to take out this border property and we're actually going to say that the table class is table and we can have table dash bordered. Let's see what it looks like. That is definitely a striking difference. You can see that we now have this nice blue looking panel, that's what I would call it, where the title is comparison, and inside of it we have our table. It's nice and stretched out, it's not confined as tight as possible, and it has a nice, very thin gray border around it. So I would say that it is very visually appealing. Finally, let's take a look at the button. The button is pulled off to the side, which is obviously because it's not in the container, but it's also square and it really doesn't fit with the theme of this uh, whole website. So first let's stick it in a container and we'll reload. And now we'll see that um, Bootstrap does supply us with a class for buttons. So the class is going to be btn, btn dash, and you'll see you notice again, primary, danger, uh, default, all of these different things that we have seen before. We'll go ahead and let's just do button warning. I think that's going to be a nice looking orange. And if I reload, you'll see that we have, the button has changed into orange with white text. It is rounded edges, and it definitely goes along with the theme, especially that nice blue up there. And now this website has a really consistent look and a really clean, nice look. So in the course of about 14 minutes, we've gone from this, which I would not call a very impressive website. I don't know if I would request a 
quote from Company Inc., if this is how I learned about them, to this. It's a very modern-looking website, a very clean-looking website, and it has all the information nicely laid out. It's very visually attractive, and I would definitely click that Request a Quote button. It even pushes down a little bit when I click it, which looks pretty nice. So I would definitely contact Company Inc. if I saw that, and I'll bet that they're going to be pretty happy with this website once I show it to them. Now, this is not all that you can do with Bootstrap. There are tons of other classes and other features that I have not showcased in this video, but this did show you how to get Bootstrap set up, and it showed you some examples. So continue experimenting, and as we make more websites in my videos, I will use more and more classes, and I'll show you how exactly they work. Bootstrap has some of the best documentation I've ever seen. Go ahead over to Components and you can see all of the different opportunities. You got all of these glyphs that you can use and then they have code examples of all of the different components that you could possibly need. So I would definitely recommend checking this out. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon with some more coding. Bye for now.